And we just watched season six of Black Mirror. Yeah, I had been looking forward to this. So what did you think of season six? Um, I feel like they have moved away from just being sheerly technology based. Yeah. Um, and I like that actually. Mm. And so I really liked it. A lot of people are saying that the quality is getting worse with every season, but I don't agree, actually. I think it's actually very... I think we have become much more harder to please as consumers. Yes, I was thinking mm -hmm. the same thing, actually. Um, but on any... You know, I'm just... I'm thrilled to have watched this kind of quality of yeah. TV. Yeah, it, it is really good quality. Mm -hmm. I, I think I would say the way it's changed is it, is it feels like now the show is like... A series of short films. I mean, it was always that way, but it yeah. feels like um, it's a series of short films on some aspect of society that's uncomfortable or mm. depressing. Yeah. Whereas I think it used to be more, it was kind of more directly related to, to technology. Yeah, I think so too. And yeah. now it's sort of just like these... Like there's in this season, there's two just sad episodes. Well, right. one really sad episode. Yes. The second one. The second one. Yeah. That's the one that takes place in. By the way, we have a bunch of spoilers. coming. Yeah, we spoil yeah. everything. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that one was just kind of sad. And we can talk about that one. But mm. maybe we should talk about the first one. Because yes. I think that one kind of hit us both. Oh, my God. Yeah. Joan is awful. Joan is awful. Mm-hmm. As we have mentioned before, I make my living as a voiceover person. And this year, it just suddenly got unbearable. The work suddenly got mildly uncomfortable. I, I don't know. It's just gradually it's becoming more and more uncomfortable. And um, it's because what the clients expect from us human talent is so much more than it used to be because a lot of AI is doing what we used to mm -hmm. do. Um, a lot of AI is kind of threatening to replace us or they've already replaced us, essentially. And we're just expected to go above and beyond, I feel like, for less money. And there's also the looming threat of AI taking our jobs um indefinitely and there are also corporations actively mining us for our data and there are currently no laws to protect us mm -hmm. from any of this so it's just rampant exploitation at the mm -hmm. moment so that was going on and, and then i saw this <laughs> And it's kind of about that, except rather yeah. than a voice, a visual image. She comes home to find out that every aspect of her life is now a TV show, mm. starting from one day, I guess. Mm -hmm. And everybody that she knows, everybody in the world is watching this show called Joan is Awful, and they know exactly what she's been doing all day, mm -hmm. right? Every day. And, and Selma Hayek, the real Selma Hayek, who is mm -hmm. playing herself, is playing her, Joan, in the, the series, right? Yeah. And so she tries to get the attention of Selma Hayek so that Selma Hayek would put a stop to to this whole thing. Right, she see has what's to act being out. done. Yeah, 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 see what's being done to her image. Yeah. Exactly. And they find out that they're in a simulation. They're actually in the show. Mm -hmm. And the real Joan, original Joan, is actually someone, someone else. Mm -hmm. And there's this machine, this quantum machine. Quantum computer. Yeah. yeah that is generating all of this mm -hmm. and just sort of like balancing these parallel worlds mm -hmm. of TV uh, actors you know, mm -hmm. acting out other TV actors and acting out. And it's just, it's infinite because like at some point, Kate Blanchett is like playing something in the show, right? within the show, in mm -hmm. the show. And so it just kind of infinitely goes, right? Mm -hmm. Goes on like this on Streamberry. And at one point, Joan gets into the room with the quantum computer and she's given the choice of, you know, she, she could bash this computer and just destroy the destroy whole artifice. the whole yeah. thing and um, which would destroy herself mm -hmm. which she knows but she does it anyway she does it anyway mm -hmm. so that was the first episode um um what was your favorite episode 
I think it was the second one, even though it was the saddest was and the scariest. So scary. depressing, yeah. Yeah, it was really depressing and scary. But it had all the elements that I liked. It had comedy. Mm -hmm. It had mystery, because I love yeah. a murder mystery. Mm -hmm. And then it had like, it went to a place that I didn't expect it would go. Same as me, yeah. Um, suspense. And then it had like, you know, Scotland. Yeah, I like that one mm -hmm. for all those reasons also. And also because we actually got to see the process of how a documentary is made, an mm -hmm. independent documentary mm -hmm. is made. And the the process you go through and then like there's that, they come across that box mm -hmm. of information. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, research is done. Yes, we don't yes. even have to do research. You've mm -hmm. got it all right here because research is such a big part of documentary mm -hmm. filmmaking. And... Probably the best character on the whole season mm -hmm. is the Scottish bartender. Yes, I agree. He was awesome. Who had, um, see, he has a Scottish accent that he does sometimes he? at home. You you oh, have yeah. a Scottish accent that you do at home sometimes. It's great. It's, and it's I, great. And I'm like, that. You that's nowhere near. You just do not appreciate near. it. Okay, I, I just did it really bad then. Yeah, I was like, Pressure's there's on. no way. <laughs> any scottish person sounds anything but like you that said but that then he, he sounded yeah, a little bit like it's that because mine is like scottish people <laughs> but it was hilarious um but it was terribly sad like at the end it was it, terribly it got a little sad. unreal at the end mm -hmm. it's like i mean i don't think people would be that unsensitive it got really you know black mirror it's very it's a very cynical show but i think people would be that insensitive i don't think so in like, hollywood Maybe, but... I think people who work in TV and movies mm -hmm. are kind of made no, no. of different stuff. I think everyone's going to be different. I mm -hmm. mean, everyone's a different person. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, there might be an aspect of that. I just thought it was a little overhyped because mm -hmm. there's not one moment when somebody, you know, kind of acknowledges the suffering that he went through to right, do this. Right, right. And so that aspect, I think, mm -hmm. wasn't quite so realistic, but... Um, I thought it was good, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so that was, was my episode. favorite one. It was what your was least your... favorite episode. So I thought the one with the the astronauts and the the replicas on Earth was very... It felt very long to me. But you know that I don't like anything space-related. Yeah, I liked that one. Mm -hmm. I thought that was good. I thought that was interesting. And I thought that it was an interesting character study. Mm -hmm. I That was... It was very long for me. Yeah, it was kind yeah. of... I think it was... Almost like an ode to Space 2001 Odyssey. A Space Odyssey because it was 1969. It was like mm. an alternate 1969, mm -hmm. which is when that movie came out. Mm. I think that's the year, 68, 69. And yeah, I just thought it was, I was fascinated by it. I didn't know where it was going to go. Mm -hmm. It was uncomfortable, you know, because you've got two guys on a space station mm -hmm. who are going to have to deal with this situation. Mm -hmm. I thought the end was kind of odd. It, you know, he kicks out the chair for him and but then again you're like well shit they have to be there what are they going to do kill each other mm -hmm. you know but i guess i liked it because it was a different idea of the idea of suffering mm -hmm. than, than the second episode mm -hmm. and that was some serious suffering yeah it was serious suffering it was very long and very uncomfortable and you're kind of like the suffering is you know the incident is create you know happens in the very beginning so you mm -hmm. kind of have to sit with that yeah on discomfort throughout mm -hmm. the whole episode right and it's on in space mm -hmm. I and fucking you don't hate, like space. I hate space I don't understand the, to, for the life of me like I just don't understand the urge to go into space like I that's like the biggest nightmare for me um. <laughs> The void and the unknown and the infinite, yeah. none of that is appealing to I me. I love it. Mm. Yeah. And um, just, you know, having to, like, be in a spaceship for however long. No, I wouldn't you know. want to do that. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to actually do it. I mm -hmm. don't have any desire to actually do it. But I like movies like this and Moon and Solaris mm -hmm. and, you know, these movies where you're kind of stuck in a place far away mm -hmm. and there's some kind of metaphysical problem going on yeah. and you don't know what it is and it usually has to do with some kind of higher consciousness and yes, i just i hate that i just love that stuff yeah, yeah. i know you do yeah 
So I thought it was good. I thought, yeah, I mean, just the idea of having to be in an artificial body that you've occupied. Mm -hmm. The other thing with Black Mirror, of course, is like none of this stuff is too far-fetched. Right. Right. And him being pinned down and watch what happens to his family Mm -hmm. is horrific. Mm Mm-hmm. And then he has to deal with that. And it's Josh Hartnett who was really good in this episode. Mm-hmm. He didn't, he didn't go full, um, s- sad. He didn't go full drama. He didn't go full, you know, cliche. I'm the broken, bereaved. He's always been like that. I feel he, like he kind of had a complexity. He was kind of weird. He yeah, was a little bit weird. He's subtle. an artist. You know, yeah. he's a painter, and painters are weird anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, very believable. Very believable. Yeah, and then. And then it's almost like, I mean, you can think of this in a political sense. Um, he goes and he does the thing that was just, mm-hmm. su- you know, that he's suffering for. Yeah. Um, which sometimes nations do this. Um, right. I didn't think of it that way. And and then what was after that? And then the werewolf Hollywood starlet paparazzi werewolf one. That was the least, my least favorite. Okay. I thought it was entertaining, but it was not black mirror at all yeah me neither and i was like it was entirely predictable it was yeah i even thought like oh she might be a werewolf i didn't think of that but when it happened i was like oh of course not in the beginning but Mm -hmm. when she was changed a chained Mm -hmm. that's when i was like oh yeah the whole yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the whole episode rests on that Mm -hmm. twist Mm -hmm. um which is not a that interesting Mm -hmm. twist yeah i didn't think that was very well written Mm -hmm. So Demon 79 or something, that was the last one. Yeah. I liked that one. It was I cute. It. Yeah. It was cute and dark and apocalyptic. I knew how it was going to end because I mm-hmm. figured that they would go off, uh, you know, end the season mm-hmm. with the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. So I figured. And then I knew, you kind of knew she was going to be right. Although right when that clock strikes midnight and you're not sure where it's mm-hmm. going to go, everything was kind of, I thought the writing was really good. Mm-hmm. It was set up beautifully to be a... It was all in her head. Yes, yes. Kind of story. Mm-hmm. But I knew that, especially today, they're not going to do that to her. Mm. She's going to be right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I liked it. It was funny because, um, you know, I know that, that some people are going to see that episode mm-hmm. and be like, oh, you know, they make everything about race now. Mm-hmm. But that was my... I worked in retail in Paris in yeah. like 2015, 14, 15, 16. And like that was my life. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many like subtle racist things that kind of that you encounter when you have like sort of like an entry level job like that in mm-hmm. In, I thought about you. Yeah, when I in saw in that. a country that mm-hmm. where people don't really look like you. <laughs> yeah, um, and that it those subtleties and those details were definitely in there. Yeah. Um, no, I thought the racial um, element was very well written. Yes, I thought it was well very done. well written too. Yeah. Because, you know, when she gets caught by the cop and she hasn't completed mm-hmm. the act, mm-hmm. it's going to be like, oh shit. Mm-hmm. He's going to get elected. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, oh, she has just created Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. the outcome that she was trying to avoid, except it didn't do that, Mm -hmm. but it could have done that. So there's a lot of subtleties in the, and then she would be the, yeah, she would be the the Indian woman who Mm -hmm. justifies Mm -hmm. horrible Mm -hmm. things. Yeah. But the whole lunch in the storage room thing, like that exact thing happened to me. Mm, Kimchi? Yeah. It wasn't even kimchi. That's the thing. It was some Vietnamese food. Mm. It was like some Thai food or something. It wasn't yeah. even my culture, like my country's food. Yeah. I would understand if I brought like natto and kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that kind of thing happens yeah. even now. And um, There was so much racism in that. Yeah, in that that's, it's, it's a very specific brand of euro racism superior it's mm. the superior thing and it's funny because i'm mm-hmm. not funny but i'm reading france fanon's mm-hmm. um black skin white masks mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. and you know the 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 air of superiority and mm-hmm. the air of inferiority mm-hmm. you know the on the person of color the 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 inferiority that they carry and then um on the on the white person mm-hmm. the sense of superiority and both according to fanon are trapped in that 
Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. this episode really yeah. did that did that well. Yep. Showed that. I would love some biryani though. Like I was I love like, biryani. It's uh biryani. It's, yeah. I was like when the, the rice the, is, is good. The coworker was complaining about her curry or whatever. I was like, "Girl, you crazy." I know. Well, the funny thing is though. <laughs> what are you eating? English fish and pe- chips? Like English what? Pe- yeah. <laughs> English people love curry though. Exactly. Yeah. This is but was this supposed to be in a different time or was this? Yeah, it was 1979, times? I think. Okay, so yeah, that, yeah. you're right. Okay, mm-hmm. so that, yeah, it's a little back in the past when. Yeah, but it's still, you know, very. Yeah, true. Much true. It's like just that. it's just more mm-hmm. subtle. Yeah. Nobody wants to get caught. Yeah, yeah. but I remember. Mm-hmm. 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 What am I, I doing? I'm a white dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and like that, I feel like every episode, I mean, even the Maisie, uh, what is it? Maisie Day, the yeah, werewolf. Ep- yeah, yeah. Even so that, that was about one, celebrity. It was yeah, kind of I, I, I get celebrity. it. Like it yeah. was a little bit t- too on the nose. Mm-hmm. But um, for me, I was in LA briefly during that year of paparazzi mania, mm-hmm. which was like 2007 or eight, um, and I was like dating this guy who was a photographer, and then he like lost his job, and then he like became a paparazzo for a couple of months and all I remember is like so I kind of like got a glimpse into what they do all day it's horrible Mm -hmm. but it's also kind of like part of the you know the the whole mechanism Mm -hmm. the the, the Mm -hmm. ecosystem and that was a really strange um it it was a, a glimpse of what all of our lives were going to kind of become like Mm -hmm. now in retrospect, Mm -hmm. because now we document ourselves voluntarily. Yes. Because I think we saw that. Yeah. I think a lot of us, especially my generation, we would see that and then associate this documentation with like celebrity and sort of immortality Mm -hmm. almost, Mm -hmm. you know, because like if you document yourself, you remain right and you are important like you matter you exist Mm -hmm. like you are here kind of thing Mm -hmm. and so i think at a subconscious level we developed a weird desire to document these things Mm -hmm. because it really did come from that paparazzi culture in Mm -hmm. my opinion Mm -hmm. it's like oh look at so and so jennifer aniston with her coffee you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. then they would, they would take pictures of like what shoes she's wearing and like, you know, zoom into like the bagel that she's eating or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. And we're doing that to ourselves now. Yeah. And I think it came from, I don't know, it was a weird segue from that, I think. Does that sound yeah, like Yeah, I don't it even know, sense? like paparazzi used to be a thing that people would talk about and then they mm-hmm. don't nobody talks about well, it you anymore. were safely tucked away in san francisco i'm but la was so celebrity culture like la no, was I, a, I mean yeah. i was still in california but while paparazzi was a big thing i remember it being talked about a lot mm-hmm. and then once social media came along like nobody talks about paparazzi anymore yeah because um they we don't need paparazzi right that's what mm-hmm. i'm thinking yeah we're doing it to ourselves. Mm-hmm. The celebrities, they do it to them themselves, too, to stay relevant. Mm-hmm. Like, they're mm-hmm. constantly documenting yeah. themselves. Plus, we've also got more interesting images. I mean, yeah, we, we're sure. full of images now. We don't yeah. need, you know, there's there's nothing quite as alluring. I mean, there's not the celebrity image isn't as alluring, I think, as it used right, to be. Right, it really is Because we entertain yeah. ourselves with yeah. images now, yeah. anyway. But I like these shows that are... I like that a lot of these were set in the past. Yeah, TV has to do this mm-hmm. now because of cell phones. Cell yeah, phones I just... Cell phones are, are story killers. I think you're right. I think you're totally right. And that's probably why this series was so compelling because mm-hmm. it wasn't very cell phone driven. Yeah. And it wasn't very... Also, I think it's very hard to imagine <laughs> what comes beyond our current uh, state of technology. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think we don't want to really imagine what goes beyond this. Like, it's just, just, you know, what else can you... I don't know. Well, we're going to see things like AI develop. Yeah. We're going to see, you know, Apple just put out their Mm -hmm. VR headset. You know, that's going to start being integrated Mm -hmm. into Mm -hmm. Apple systems and Mm -hmm. things like that. And... 
I don't really have a lot of interest or faith in the metaverse kind of thing mm. or the virtual reality thing. I don't think that's going to be, you know, it's probably going to be subtle, but it's, and I'm saying that in a hopeful sense because mm -hmm. this technology now that's being developed really is horrible mm, yeah, and I heard about this, yeah. unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, just development for development's sake to try to make more money. Yeah. Um, it's not really helping your life at mm -hmm. all. And I, you know, hopefully there's going to be some sort of reckoning about that mm -hmm. fact mm -hmm. that this thing, really, this stuff isn't really making our lives better. And I think that there is going to be a, a reckoning to the, you know, people like, you know, running Facebook, Amazon, you know, uh, Meta, mm -hmm. I guess that's the same thing. Twitter, you know, there's going to be a reckoning about, about mm -hmm. that as these tech moguls become more freaky and our lives get shittier. Mm -hmm. People are mm -hmm. going to start making that connection. Mm -hmm. So as like an old person, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, as that. somebody who's over 50, mm -hmm. um, when did your life peak? Like where, when do you think technology should have just oh. kind of stopped right there? Well, independent of the events of my life. You yeah, mean, independent in of the of... events of your life. Let me think. Um, in terms of technology and society and things yeah, like that. Yeah, but I guess like you can't really separate it from your own... If it, the, I can. The, I have a can. moment. Okay. I have a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the iPhone. Mm. It was the smartphone. Okay. The smartphone ruined everything. So before the smartphone, you were fine. Before the iPhone, things were okay. I, th I would have to agree with you mm -hmm. because... And I also held out... And didn't get a smartphone I until really for, late. Yeah, like because I, also later. I was living in France. And mm. fr in France, it was like very much acceptable to not have a cell phone yeah. for until like 2015. Yeah. And people don't really expect you to answer your texts right away like here in right. korea like that if you if like you go over a minute without answering your text in korea they mm -hmm. think it, you're dead and then they start calling you like 10 times in a row